Hello everybody, welcome to season 49, first round match between Baza Castine. Oh my god, we started off with a dead Chaos Warrior from a thrown rock. And the apple comes in and fails. Oh my god, unbelievable. Um, versus Baza Castine and. No, Baza Castine with the Lizards versus Mr. Page and his Chaos. In the booth with me is Purple Chest. Hello! Jim, uh, the earth has shaken beneath me. <laughs> Rarely can we say both hello and did you feel the equity heave at that moment. Uh, yeah. As rightly as we do right now. Yeah, this is wild. Mr. Page has 150k in his bank, did not buy a reserve. Um, and you have to say immediate punishment, right? Uh, Baza has bought a wizard and an uh, apothecary, which, you know, he might be using the apothecary very soon. Uh, Checking out Mr. Page's uh, bench, and it didn't take me very long, Jim. Yes, yeah, he's, he's he's capped at 10 for the rest of the match. That is unbelievable. I mean, that seems really weird. Like, his team's very, very violent. I would definitely want a bit it's, of... Yes, extraordinarily violent. Um, and it's so violent that it's ended up being quite good. Um, they've taken some late guard and some stand firm, which has also made them just a complete pain in the ass. You can't guard lock this and try and overpower it. Uh, it has, through all its kill skills, accrued enough to actually be a proper-looking dangerous line all across the board. Mm. That said, there are only ten of them. And mm. the flip side of that rock that took out the Chaos Warrior, well thrown that, that arm in the crowd, was the rock that stunned Asaurus. Now, that Asaurus, therefore, didn't take a Claw Mighty hit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, in some ways, that was a double win. Yeah. Doesn't follow and doesn't want to pile. Scared of that dirty player skink, who's you know lurking. The dirty player skink are very he rare. Absolutely very rare has commodity. to be, Jim. Uh, you know the the route to success in this game now is when you uh, cast your eye over a Bazakistein's bench. He has three skinks on it. Uh, all of his skinks, except the uh, plus agility, are disposable. And once the game is won, I would suggest that it will be fouling to try and get off the pitch. <laughs> yeah. So really, if he can get anything on the ground, he will be kicking it in the face. Yeah. That might even include this near rookie uh, beastman that he's been fed. Yeah, I think shouldn't he shouldn't he surely take the claw? The problem is he can't foul that one unless he runs all the way around. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, but you two, can. three, four, five. No, I mean you could with a single go for it on the crocs push it downfield towards your well, lizards, he, but he goes for the fed one. It's not worth it, and it leaves the crocs as a chum in the water as well. So you go for the Prophet Beastman. Ah, and the one in nine means you are probably right, too. Mm. Still, you can get all over this. It's it's not dangerous. I'd be amazed if we don't see three Sauruses on it. Otherwise, you can absolutely claw one of them off and then give it enough support to hit the other one off and then make your new base behind where that Beastman is. So I would put three on for sure. No, the problem is it's hard, isn't it? Because then you, you know, then you've got to activate the Crocs. Because at the moment the Crocs is yeah, uh, and just short on the other side. Now you probably just close the clock, Crocs, right? Yeah. Is it defenseless? A defenseless armor nine. He's basically the softest target. No, well, he does have thick skull, but he's not completely the softest. Yes, target. and I mean, one of the flip sides of that is that if you are hitting into there, you're probably retreating out of that because you don't want to be advancing your ball through the middle of three down sauruses. Well, um, you or I wouldn't. They're not particularly good. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> well, he's still a wizard. You know, they're, they're... <laughs> he has played Blood Bowl before. Yep. Am I going straight in for the Crocs here? He's it. taking the space. He's definitely hitting this Crocs, and he's also trying to take the space down the side. Yeah, yeah this is awkward. Yeah, I don't hate it. It's, it's interesting that he has taken the plus AV on the ball carrier which clearly gets wizarded so often yeah. that he's finding that pays off. Yeah. Well, you would, wouldn't you? I mean, yeah. that has lightning bolt written all over it. Yes, and I mean, he's, he's up TV every single game, so he's get, he gets a lot of chance to use it. This, this was Mr. Page's early season team where he just, you know, crushes people with 300 TV advantage every single game and gets 70% of his matches end in concession wins, uh, which makes it somewhat easy to build a team and, and qualify for Chalice, doesn't it? So fair play to him. Good strategy. Now, Jim, I hear the, the faint tinge of maybe some um, mild disapproval there, but I mean, no. it is... 
pure it's admiration. It's proven pure to admiration. work, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah pure admiration. He, he puts in he puts in the hours and he gets the free wins. You know, fair play to him. It's the best strategy. Like that's well, it. it. Certainly, it's it's effective if this is the sort of team you want to build. That is a good time to build it. I mean, always punching down is a good way to um, end up with a team like this. Yeah, it's it's just literally the best strategy. Like for for winning games, for winning Chalice. It's you know, Cruz did it. You know, kind of like not as extreme as Mr. Page, but Cruz did the same kind of thing, right? For like many many seasons. Yes. It's the it's the best. It's a very similar strategy. Yes. Yeah. So now we do have to throw some meat in the way of this advance, or it's going to be, you know, an, an early-ish score. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Isn't he? he wants to shepherd him in. Um, yeah. I think it's more important that he stops him reversing than than like you know gets in the way. Because you, what you really don't want to do is store up the whole half. Like if he gives you even a two turn with skinks, you should you should be able to get that. Yes, you should be very confident of doing so. Um, yes, so it's about pushing them down the flank, letting them score if needs be, not taking the attrition as you do. Yeah. And as you said, what you don't want is them to reverse the field. Where they're defending all the way across the line against you and you're pushing back towards your own line. So ideally you want to split the field in half and defend across the middle line. Mm. Which Bearza is doing, dodging away from Claw, yeah. obviously. He could have just not stood him up. And he's done that a couple of times where, honestly, like, you know, two-thirds of the time you're standing, which is kind of cool. But, you know, so, sorry, well, a third of the time you're standing, but two-thirds of the time you're just taking an armor roll and, like, yeah. you're not it's really not in a better position. It's not the same as, a black so. orc or a dwarf, which is at least a 50% dodge. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's a one-in-three success. Um, so you really need to think, I mean, as you said, the grass can still be dangerous. It doesn't come with Mighty Blow, but it, it does come with the um, nasty cuts, particularly to elves, I find. <laughs> Another 87s. <laughs> but still, one in six, it's going to break your armor, and 50% of those, it's going to remove you. So, I mean, roughly. Hmm. So, Mr. Page not going for the claw pom hit here. Instead, doesn't need it. Um, going for the more Mighty positional, anyway. just claw Mighty, but yeah, it gets a cut yeah. anyway. Obviously, instant apple here for, for uh, Bazzi. He's got two. Yeah. You joke about the plus edge on the Saurus uh, twice hop, but you know one of the better players um, in Fumble and uh, one of the better coaches on Fumble took plus edge on his Saurus at a Saurus ball carrier. And listen, then it's very powerful, right? Like it, it shows up. Like you don't have to carry on it every match, but in those matches against Els, having a having an edge two ball carrier with you know like that's actually really good, right? So yep, just 75 like percent to hand to it or pick up with it if you're prepared to throw a reroll at it. Mm. He had sure hands actually. Terrible Terrible in his lizards. He had like, he had a, you know, edge two. He maybe even got edge three on it actually, but he was definitely well, like, edge two. Sure, like a bull centaur, isn't it? The big problem is getting the ball on the thing. Once it's on there, it's a nightmare. Yeah, incredibly strong and fast. Mm. Oh, he's having a think about this one. Isn't he? He doesn't want the armor roll on his on his most valuable no. player. No, oh, he gets it anyway. And now he gets to stick the crocs it's on it. It's a lovely foul source. target, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, he... it, it does mean giving up the pressure of this turn. You can just... The back is just, you know, going to be eaten alive, but... You can just freeze him out, though, right? That's the thing. He's only yeah. strength four on the blitz, so you can kind of try to freeze him out and... Put pressure on the cage, right? The ball is the ball is somewhat exposed. So if you blitz this guy and pressure the cage, you can you can leave this guy isolated. And I think playing for the ball is a good idea when you've got a wizard and limited yep. time. Well, I mean, you're, you're just not going to survive to overtime. It has to be a plan that wins in as short an order as possible to be any sort of realistic plan at all. Oh, do you remember the heady days of, um, of that early casualty? Oh, I was just, just going to say, oh, wow, this stand firm guy going to hold up three players, but he just randomly doesn't stand firm. What a player, Surely guys. that guy's job is to take hits. What a player, guys. Uh, not what I would have done. But who can say if it was good or bad? I allowed an opinion. Yeah. It was terrible. I agree. <laughs> Although... <laughs> 
I can see why he did it. He feels he's got this stall. The Wiz might still be incoming. He, he doesn't want to take any more hits. He's got, remember, capped at 10. Yeah. It was the extraordinary decision not to um, get one more for the bench. Yeah. And when you're already facing a ton of inducements, really, the numbers can matter. That's why I had the 12th Dwarf for my um, extremely challenging oh, game. He's forgotten a player. <laughs> I guess his chat told him. <laughs> that would have helped. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Well, we've all done it. Yep. We can mock, but we've all done oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah, it's just funny, isn't it? It's not it's not it's not being nasty to him. It's just funny. But you've got to think Bazza should have put more heat on, like he was he was a player up yeah. because of that. You know, parity but because of the warrior being down, like maybe he's, I think maybe Bazza should be more aggro here. Like I know it's scary, obviously all the claws and everything, like but the claws are horrendous. It is just a monstrous team. And it's also stand firm if you don't knock them over or down. See, this is the thing. By, by, trying to, by trying to base this guy, that doesn't work if you're not attacking the cage, right? If he attacks the cage, that has to be dealt with. But now by just going there, it doesn't do anything. It just gives him a call on him. So, yeah, I didn't like that. From I think it was all about trying to get that foul in and hoping to remove a piece that way. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, he had a two assist foul, which wasn't wasn't terrible. And now he gets another foul on him next turn, doesn't he? Oh wow, he didn't stand up. He didn't stand firm, so he could uphill block and roll double pals. Brilliant play. Well, if you're rolling the pals. <laughs> There you go. I mean, he's not going to need more than one reroll in the next uh, four turns, is he? Yeah. Or is he? Stay tuned and find out. Oh, Mister Mister now saw him as well. Yeah, he didn't have problems with his eyes. There was there was a guy just standing <laughs> all the way down inside Mister Page's house. Sorry, I didn't see that. <laughs> wow. I'm watching on my own client, and I I hadn't spotted it either. So, we's all idiots. <laughs> Oh, now he's going for a lovely wall against this wizard. And leaves himself still within range of fireball, taking down the ball carrier and the wall. Brilliant. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that, this could be a fireball time, right? Oh, he's moved out well, a little bit. I mean, there's also no tackle. I mean, there's tackle on the skink that's near the line of scrimmage, but the one right on the line of scrimmage isn't tackle. Yeah. So skinks can whiz past that on two pluses if they're agility four. And there happens to be one nearby that is. Just goes for the bolt. Just goes for the bolt. And yet, well, the edge of the just go in, get it, and run away again. Yep. If it's and it is, oh, it's not the ideal one, but it's not a terrible place. I'd still go under to get there, but once I've got it, I'm probably going out over in the middle route because mm. you can come off the. Oh no, because then there's yeah, there's you tackle can, two up as well. You can well. blitz this tackle, blitz this tackle, and then yeah. one, two, three, four, five. And just six, go right seven, through the middle. Yeah, just eight, go through the claw. Nine hand off. Put a disposable skink on the two to the top, blitz the the claw tackle to the bottom, and go through there. Then you can just go straight for it and straight back out again. To the plus if we save him. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> Excellent. Well, but I don't. I don't hate it. Look, so late on a developed ball carrier that's got everything you want, and you know it's going to get bolted. It's not Ooh, terrible, is it? Always moved him. Yeah, look, I called it. I called. I called the blood ball. The blood ball three meta. Don't worry about that. Uh, did you? Or was that? Yeah, I, I, I would take it. Even yeah, I would literally that's take exactly the route I'd have gone. So he's just coming back out and not handing off. Then this is interesting. Yeah, straight back out. Well, who are you going to give it to? That's better than that thing. Well, I would have given it to this guy and just fucked off. I guess he's actually got the sweeper. He's actually got this insane sweeper that he forgot. This guy that he just forgot about would have been the sweeper. But come on, Bazza, stand these guys up first. Come on, man. Play properly. Now, if he gets back out, he's got the skink up by the crocs that can run deep. Yeah, but he can't. can't like he can't hand it can't off. Can't stay him. there. Oh. oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's got. He's just running in and out. Yeah, it needs to go for, now. He needs to get off the um, the warrior, obviously. This, this, this guy's got to come back to protect vital, him. pretty vital, isn't it? This guy's got to come back to protect him, hasn't he? 
Yeah. And dodging. Okay. Let's stand these up. Come on. Come on, Vaza. Turn ordering. Oh, that's the one that I think should have gone deep. We can't. Nah, no, he's got to protect the ball. Like he literally, he's he's given up the hit. On, he's given up the hit on the ball too easy. If he doesn't run out to protect, he he had to screen it. Yeah. Okay. And he's got the time. Yeah. Oh, and of course, yes, because he brought the Sauras down. The sidestep can head up the field a bit. Yeah. Well, this looks pretty positive. Very nice, yeah. I think it was probably the right time for the Wiz. The AG4 was right there, ready to go. The yeah. AG4's bunties are so good, aren't they? It's ridiculous how easy they get everywhere. Yeah, moving this guy up obviously protected him against the fireball, but fucked him for the ball a bit, didn't it? So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess he could have just gone around the bottom, but it would have been harder. In particular, it all depended where the ball landed, didn't it? If the yeah. ball landed directly in front of him, then going around the bottom, it's still only 1 in 36 each step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just you've still got a reroll. Harder to get a good result, though, isn't it? Whereas here, anywhere it goes, with that gap, you can get, yes. you can get either side. I don't see how Mr. Page gets a hit on the ball this turn. Which means, next turn, this skink is, like, here. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's pretty bad for Mr. Page. Well, I mean, hence, you should already be thinking about that, shouldn't you? If you're not hitting it this turn, yes. how do you move pieces in place to hit it next turn? Yes. And that's assaulting probably through the sidestep skink in the middle of the field. You've got a tackle mighty piece right by there. Oof. Oof. Not claw bombing. Not, not like this, really. No, this is getting like this is leaving yourself further away, right? Yeah. I think you know I mean, maybe you, you're literally hitting the Saurus that is going to be the least relevant to where that skink is next turn. Yes. Now, yes, it's now got to two plus dodge off you, but I'm not sure that's going to particularly worry him. No, no, it's a one in thirty six chance. And he's okay. He hasn't. He's got tackle, but he puts in the reroll. He doesn't care. <laughs> this is much more important. Is killing that skink. Yep, and getting a tackle on the other one. Yeah. If I was blitzing anywhere, I'd have been blitzing that other skink with that tackle fella, not the Saurus, which was already taggable, or also behind the play, because where the play's going is not where it is now. Yeah. Yeah, fair, fair enough, Star, fair enough, that did work. So the tackle I would have blitzed with onto that sidestepping skink is now stood up behind the crocs and will be on the wrong side of the pitch when that skink goes exactly where you said it would, Jimmy. Mm. And instead he's got a block beast running back. Now he can sweep, but not well. The question here is he could blitz with his, with his Saurus, right, to, to avoid the 1 in 36 to lose the game, which is, yeah, that's what he does. Um, yep. There was also the option to like blitz with this Saurus, right? It's also a nice piece to hit, isn't it? Yeah. And if he gets it, there's the nice hit on the Chaos Warrior. Because yeah. again, those Sauruses are not that relevant to where you want to go. And yeah. gets it, at least KO'd. Yeah, it, I'd have been tempted to blitz this one, right? And obviously he's got stun firm, but if you power him and then run back and then you can move the Crocs over and then you've got a lot of support there. So Certainly you need, you need more up there because if the only things that Mr. Page has run back... If that Crocs activates, although you probably do it with the Saurus, if yeah. the Saurus activates, then the Crocs can tie up the only other thing he's run back. Mm. The side scare step just needs to go around the other side of the Mighty Blow Beast. And, and yeah, that's very difficult to get anything back that has a realistic option of stopping this skink. Mm. Yeah, there's only this guy, isn't there? So, yeah, block him and then stick the Crocs on him. And then dodge out to try and two D. No, once you uh, once you block the stand firm with the crocs, I'd head up the field. But there's the there's that block beastman. This guy can yeah, this guy can get you though, right? This guy can get you this turn. So you got to deal with him. I think. Yes, but the 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 skink at the back dodges out and deals with him. And if he does so, then the one that's on him dodges out and goes and helps cover near you. Oh yes, yeah, so dodge. You'd go for one in nine first, but I don't know. Yeah, that, that that, this is two D with block. I, I, I mean, it, 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 he hasn't got the power anyway. If I if I power this, I'd definitely put the Crocs on him and just just be safe, and then try and but dodge out both the skinks to get. Yeah, there. it is only a block beastman up the field. You're probably right. Maybe he is long on skinks. He can throw one or two into them under the bus and not miss them. 
Yeah, it's it's just the it's just it's just them failing, right? It's just the failure state of yes. them not getting there. Okay, he's going for the double side line cage. Okay, yeah. So like this, this is obviously yeah, the best that one in worked, nine has to scary. work too. Yeah. Yeah, that was it was just scary. Ooh. Is it? Because now they're down there in your face. Yeah, just f scary failure state, right? Yeah. Scary failure state, but I mean, he and really wanted to blow is, is hitting thing. presumably the side step. Yeah. Although that's you know it's probably fine. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, Storm maybe he's going aggressively in on the cage, and not allowing the pawn might have also worked, right? <laughs> like it was. Yeah. Who knows, right? Who knows? Like, I don't think it. It worked out okay. Baz has won, giving up that pom hit. Um, but you know, who knows? Who knows? Who knows what would have worked? Pom sometimes, Jim. Hmm. Either way, my glorious. Have no, I won't give in until I'm victorious. And I will defend. I Glorious. will defend. This is the problem bringing the skinks to the ball and not tagging the two guys we wanted tagged. Is one's run super deep, so you're not escaping, you know, some sort of threat next turn. And the other one can come directly and attack one of these skinks, which presumably it will. I hope, again, Mr. Page is running plenty of people away from the ball first, which is always good to do. Yeah. Yeah, this, this, this sucked though, right? Like... And I I'm, I'm wasn't that big a fan of that blitz. Like, honestly, I think if you blitz this and re-roll it, and then you get both of these guys, you know, I think that seems really cool to get both of these guys active. But obviously you'd have yeah. to re-roll it. And as it happened, he, re he would have re-rolled it both down, so it would have been terrible anyway. Um, thank you very much, Randy Tanner. Thank you very much for staying fantastic for seven glorious months. Oh, yeah! Uh, when, the, when the hit failed to move it, you had to tag the other people with skinks. So you do the one that isn't risky first, and then that gets on this fella that's just come towards the ball. And if that worked, the sidestep, it could have gone and tagged the one that's gone really up the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know you'd take hits, but just like that, there's a reasonable chance of tanking them. It's not as terrible as, you know, your expectation might be. Yeah, it's it's just it's again it's well it's it's it would it was the first one in nine that was scared me there, right? Like yes. that's the thing. It, and it there's no the way of getting away from that. There's literally range. no way of getting away from that. But the had I proud of it, just in range of, um, of basic. So. No, no, the the the, the block mighty beast man. That that's the thing. Yeah, like, so you have if, to do the one if you fail that dodge, get on him, then yes. he can just dodge and hit you. So. And on the three plus, he can. Yes. Yeah. Whereas now that he's missed that hit, I mean, it's a it's a one in nine to remove him, and hopefully all three skinks can end up coming down the field again. Yep. Yeah. This is really easy for Baza. Baza. One, two, even on a push, it, he can just dodge the other guy around, right? So he's just going to carry on with the sideline cage here. Yeah, on a push, the one that pushes doesn't one in nine. It just doesn't advance and then goes up the inside. Yep. And then the ball goes and then you do the dodge. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, he's at least getting to here. Oh, he's used a second apple. Did he apple a KO there or something? Oh, was it another Kaz? Didn't didn't even notice it. Okay. Well, it's a strange angle to come from. I'd have come from directly behind, giving me the option of pushing him to the outside, which is what I would have done on the push. Yeah, interesting. But perhaps he was going to leave him behind the sidestep if it didn't. Um, yes. Um, yeah, maybe. And just run upfield with just a mate for company, because. I mean, looking at it now, you know, he does. Does he need? Does he need a third skink? <laughs> What's that block beastman going to do? Knock him over and then what? Yeah. The other one just takes the ball and runs off. Yeah. But he still doesn't want his ball carrier hit, obviously. Yeah. This stand firm has been amazing, hasn't it? It has. Now, do you wander your claw? Probably have to. Yeah. Yeah. You probably just have to. It's probably better odds than uh, than dodging off the damn thing, isn't it? Yeah, and it's better odds than getting you get punched. It, you get a nice hit on the other one. Yeah. Oh, look at that. And yeah, he didn't have stand firm anyway, so it was obvious. The one with the stand firm, you obviously you've got to save the 2D for the one with the stand firm. Even if it's stand firm, you still got to 1D them anyway, haven't you? Because you're just going to get 2D. And yeah, because that one is stand firm. Uh, but also, had the re-rolls... Because that didn't—he's going to—he still got two for two. 
could afford that to uh, to greed, and it was no loss. Yeah. So now what that's it. That's the one we're taking these on. Of course, the forty-five percent you don't knock them over. They're just stood there laughing at you, preparing their claw. Yes. I mean, Mr. Page, he's, he, he can get to, He knew for two turns this was coming as well, or should have known for yeah. two turns, but like exactly where the ball was going to there, and then he was going to be yes. there. So he, he had two turns to get back, and all he's got is yes. a block beast man. He's not well, and as I pointed out, several times his tackle pieces went into the scrum to try and kill lizards rather than heading back towards the ball, giving him some sort of hope of yeah. at least getting some three plus danger on these skinks and maybe killing one or two. Yep. So some of this is choice, but yes, he, he was, I mean, in some ways, very unlucky. A, a nice procession forwards, interrupted by good whiz that was well taken advantage of. Yep. And, of course, very unlucky with the initial death off the, off the rock. <laughs> that was yeah. insane. That was just hilarious, but yes, very unlucky. Yep. If he kills enough, the second half becomes very difficult, doesn't it? It's about running away from claw pom as the sauruses get removed and keeping enough skinks that you can hold the ball away. Mm. So there's still plenty of outs for Mr. Page here. Yep. Of course, all Baz has got to do is use his fleet of skinks, outmaneuver the chaos, and get a second score, yes. and then play from the floor. Yeah, that's that's looking it's looking real good for Bazaar, isn't it? Really nice. Let's pretend for a minute that he had enough of a team that his bench of three meant that he had choices. <laughs> Would you still perhaps put all the skinks on that you've got? Hmm. That's I say that there is nothing injured on but Zacherstein's team right now. There's two KOs but no permanent injuries. They've been apoffed. Hmm. Perhaps you put all the skinks on and just play for the, you know, the raw pace. Yeah, interesting. Certainly, That's... maybe leave the crocs off. I just, I'm not sure what value it serves. Yeah, well, it's it's a good decoy octopus, isn't it? Uh, you know, it's a it's a great target to blitz. Uh, it is, but if all I'm trying to do is literally just score as quick as is humanly possible, then I think more skinks and less. But he's a really good he's a really good target for Mr. Page to blitz. You know, you can dangle him out there and Mr. Well, Page yeah. will be like, Ooh He will, dead, he dead, will dead. The Aruga Aruga cartoon noise you can hear going off in his head, can't yeah. you? Yeah. Aruga, Aruga. <laughs> oh look, something else has come back to pressure the ball. That's nice. What an interesting and innovative thought. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's move it, guy. <laughs> okay, so you know that that does something, doesn't it? You know he's got enough back to make this not easy, right? He doesn't want a one in nine, so he probably just has to dodge through. Yeah, two dodges. Well, three, three, one in thirty sixes, isn't it? Oh, two, yes, of course. So, yeah, you've got, got the up. inside. You've still got the range. So I think you probably do score on seven, don't you? Yeah. yeah. There he goes. Yeah, it's not ideal, especially as you've made two great KOs and you really don't want to give him an LOS. So maybe you just run over and, and hope, but I don't think you can without block. I mean, I you'd really have to. Don't think you well, I mean, can. you can screen it with the other skinks, but again, you are relying on those one in nines. Yeah. And there's three of them, and all of them have to work, really. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting, isn't it? Like, maybe, maybe it's right to go for this. Like, maybe it is right to go for the stall. Like because this is so yes, bad getting it, in two KO rolls. No, and he's decided hours. against. I, I think I probably would have done, mm. but again, I would have the first skink I dodged off. I would have put around the the nasty side of the plus strength piece, trying to hold it in place. But it's so fast. It was a real, it was a real tough call with him only having like, oh wow, with him only having eleven players. It was a real tough call, I think. There. Well. Um, the bad news is the uh, the KAs did not come back. Mm. So, now so it was the Crocs sleeps on. Um, he does have a choice of what team he puts out on the field here. Uh, oh, first of all, for the short turn, of course, but then for the second half, looks like he will too. Yeah. Mr. Page right now is capped at eight. Yeah. With two sleepy sleepers. Um, 
I think it's probably the other way around, dog to the dog. I think maybe I think the 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 head play is to store, but I think in the heat of the moment, most people would not really have the balls for that, <laughs> and would just score it. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the flip side is it's three disposable skinks he's putting on the line here. Yeah, to be one up on you know with the ball in the hand for the second half, I think this is fine. Yeah. Yeah, Plus, he I probably don't think Page right now has the wit and all the players to deal with a riot in his favour. So today. it's it's fine. So was my cock. If all three of those dies, you're still fine. You've got enough skinks to be one, what to be two nil should be fairly easy. Yeah, it was a tough. I think that was a tough call whether whether to attempt the stall or not. Um, there are like massive plus points for both, aren't they? Like obviously a guaranteed touchdown is massive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even if he gets both of his calls back and kills three skinks, you're still one nil up, and that means a hell of a lot, a hell of a lot. I mean, with that um, KO recovery, Jim, he's still got a bench of two. So if two of these die, he's still got eleven to start the second half. Yeah. Plenty of skinks to field that ball and get it, you know, safe, and then sneak it past the cows, go two nil. Jobs are good. Well, there you go for store head I think heart he probably, and probably did the right call. <laughs> Mr. Page is setting up for the riot. Go heavily down one flank. Oh, yeah, he's got just... a decent eight turn, hasn't he? He's got a decent eight turn. He's, he's got a decent yeah, one turn with the movement. Turn. Eight. Yeah. So perhaps he's even setting up to one turn this. I say decent. He's he's at three, so he's not that decent, but he's got a chance. Yes, that's that's sort of how you do it. Imagine if you'd had a two heads instead of an extra arm. It would be even better. He certainly would. And be an all-round better player. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> I'll never understand the extra arms players. Like, I, I, I can see it for, like, league people, you know? Um, you know, like Lupac, for example. Great example is Lupac. Uh, right. He mostly played in UK BBL, where, you know, most people in... In, in private leagues like that are terrible, right? No offence, same as tabletop. Most of them are terrible. And you, so, you know, with that extra right. arms lets you farm passes, right? You can catch on twos and level up his other players with, with vanity passes. So he gets a bit of utility out of that way, so it isn't I just worse than the sure hands, yeah. So that's not something I do. That's you know, genuinely a thought process I haven't had. No, I should have thought, how is someone breaking this to their own advantage? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he probably does have a decent eight turn one turn. Thanks, Guru. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. So he was yeah he was using the whole method, which was unnecessary. But... Yes, but I understand why people do it, it. It sort of works and sort of it's easy to get your head round. It's easy to visualise. Visualise and actualise. Yeah. And, they're and all that's three genuinely a helpful space he's put himself into. Baza has got it on manual for this one-turn attempt. No, he doesn't. Oh, my God. Or does he? Yeah, he does. Okay. <laughs> so there you are at the cost of a skink. One turn avoided. Yeah. Uh, is it still possible from here? It might still be possible from here. No. 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 No, because of the whole method it isn't. Yeah. So the one that would have to hit the middle skink is um, has already moved, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Visualize, actualize, blunderize. <laughs> wow, still. Okay, second one survives. So he will be full for the second half. Mhm. Mm I think maybe if I think maybe if uh, if Bazard didn't have the bench, he would have he would have let him go. But yeah, because he's, he's got the bench, he'll let him get the knockdown. Yeah, I think that's correct. Correct. Visualize, actualize, snake eyes. Very good. <laughs> so there you are. Two out of three survived. Yep. Happy days. Should have made that a 4D. Good point. Good point from Alpha. <laughs> ah. Doesn't pass to the... Uh, extra arms guy but could have done you know in this yes, situation yes could have made some use of that but decided not to I mean he was going for the one turn which is you know totally fair but like that, this is the sort of situation in those leagues where that extra arms does then come in and you know help out with the uh, spreading SPP same, same thing with Devo with his, his throwers with catch right you know again in, in those leagues that he was in 
he was lots better than most people he played, so he would get lots of opportunities to uh, farm yeah. said bad players. I didn't know these things. I guess I'm a, a sweet innocent. <laughs> <laughs> Visualize play Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> now you don't follow up with the blitz. You need the, the rerolls. Yeah, absolutely. Well restrained. Well, hey, Croxy is back. Yeah, and uh, so is the one, one of the killers. Now. But the uh, the Claw Mighty is gone still. Mm. Page captain nine. Tackle. tackle as well. Yeah. A crucial tackler out. Meaning there is only one tackle on Mr. Page's team. Uh, if you want to know where it is, it'll be as far from the skinks as he can find a use for it. <laughs> well, <laughs> a oh, warrior, no, he's got a, yeah, he's got a warrior right, tackle, so, yeah, so that, will be, that will be far away. But he's, he's got one, one yeah, the claw pond has got tackle, and this warrior's got tackle. But this warrior is probably not going to be hitting skinks, right? He's going to have to fight the Saurus because... Yes. Saurus are very strong, so yeah, he's they are. pretty much got one guy with tackles. Yeah. I mean, can't you know how we were gloomy for the Saurus's futures? There's still six of them, Jim. Yeah, yeah. And both, the apples, both apples are being used. I mean, they yes. might, <laughs> details, it's, details. It's maybe not looking good for their life expectancy uh, in in subsequent rounds, but it's certainly looking good for them making more rounds. Whereas it's not I looking would good not for the sell chaos. them insurance right now. That's for sure. But right as things stand. They are all alive. Yeah. Uh, if things stand, they've got more chance of making the second round of chal Chalice than any of Mr. Page's players. <laughs> but that can still change, right? Like, But I do think you bang it in as quick as possible, right? Go for the 2-0. Yeah. Because he just hasn't got anyone that can do anything no. about it, basically. Like, he just hasn't and at 2-0, you don't have to do anything at all, because if they score, they score, they'll give you the ball back. Yeah. Hello, Hellboy. Hello, HTK. I mean, if you can slow it by a turn Hello, or two with something that's not massively dangerous, you probably do. Yeah. You know, making them score in four instead of three is probably helpful, but it's if you can get the 2 nil at any time, the game's won. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think he has to go mental for a two-turn or anything, but, like, no. he can certainly... And that's the thing, there's... Oh, wow. Ooh, now, this wow. could change things, Jim. Wow, yeah, okay. Massive equity shift. That is huge. Well, both halves of this Blood Bowl game have had their peaceful uh, beginnings battered by the shuddering equity shifts that have been the kickoff results. <laughs> uh, the first half we saw someone die, and someone else only gets stunned, which probably saved its life. <laughs> he had the big old blitz. Now, it is a deep kick, so there's no way Page is getting anywhere near it. But how much can he mess with this line of scrimmage? Can he turn the hitting turn around? Mm, very interesting. He could, he could claw on this defenseless Saurus. He could claw on a skink. He could claw on him and try to get you know guards in over here. He could, he could claw on this guy and try and get guards in here. There's lots and lots of options. Yeah, there really is. I don't does know what the best one is. Does he come full aggro on the line of scrimmage? Certainly, some threat on the skinks isn't bad news. He does need to get the numbers turned around here. Hmm. I mean, I think he's going for the uh, the Saurus on the line of scrimmage on the right as we look. Yeah. Uh, my jumper is purple. <laughs> or... <laughs> it's blue. I think I would probably go for a skink. <laughs> Just knowing I need that numbers to swing. Purple. Right now it's 11 v 8. Yeah. No, 11, 11 9, sorry. Yeah. It looks like he is going to go for a skink. Oh, he's gone for this. Lord! One. No, he's coming for the one on the other side. Oof, if he'd gone for a skink or the defenseless Saurus, he would have got the knockdown. Oof. Dang, always right, Jim. <laughs> but. He's going to use the jugs, isn't he? Push him at least he's got jugs, so at least he can push it off the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And then probably retreat. Does he have any move? Yeah. No, oh, he's going to GFI them. Probably double GFI. No, he's not. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's just getting his, just getting his killer hit. Foo -wah. He's already lost one, but then he does have three warriors that can, you know, do a bit of killing in a pinch, eh? Yeah, but I mean, this is Mr. Page's first action. I mean, he might, he might be sensible and, you know, move some And another claw first, mighty beast. This, this guy is getting mighty blood instantly. Oh yeah, 100%. 
Yeah, he's not even doing the sensible moves first. He's just like, fuck it, let's go. Let's yeah. fucking go. <laughs> smash. <laughs> Bazza, <Buzzer>, smash. <laughs> I'm very surprised they didn't push it just directly up the field because the dirty player could have got around to it. Mm. Well, he can do, go next to it now. Stand firm there, Vicky, my boy. He's got stand firm. I'm also seeing a gaping this hole. Fella. This fella's got stand firm. Where I would be heading. Yep. Yep, he can rotate all these over. Pick up the ball, get down the field a little bit. What's sick about lizards is like that they're, they're like strike range, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like they've only got to get a few a few squares into the opposing half. Like it's insane. Like it's so insane. <laughs> they're so good lizards while they've got players. I hear, Jim, if you take all of the skinks out, they're not so good. Yep. That's true. <laughs> you might already be 2 0 down by then, though, is, is one of the things that can go wrong. That can that. be a problem, yes. Mm. Oh. He gets the power. Yeah, he's going to foul the stand firm. This stand firm has been a right thorn in his side. I, I don't hate fouling the stand firm. It's a roll there, but yeah. yeah, I think fouling. I mean, well, also, it gives you just total domination up that flank. Yeah. I mean, other things can come over there, but they're not there right now. Yeah, I don't hear this. <laughs> yes, Tom Schnizier. Yeah. Because if it stands up in the middle of all that, it's in a, a problem position. Yeah. Wow, going for the blockless block first. That was a bit risky, but that gives you Well, if you can take here. this claw... Oh. <sighs> If he'd taken that claw down, it would have been a glorious turn. Yeah, it would have been incredible, yeah. yeah. I think it was the right thing to do. Here we go, the big foul. KO's fine. Yep. I Even mean, if you lose the skink, you'd take that. I mean, I feel the game is in this drive. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I think what's the top of the game. you take more trade. Yeah, yeah, fine trade. It's for the rest yep. of the game, yeah, essentially. Cas for a cas, basically. Now, can you take enough? Can you tank these hits on the line of scrimmage and hold enough up that you can get past and be gone? Yeah, maybe. Of course, that plus move is just so fast, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. I was just looking at it, thinking, well, that beast's out of the uh, drive, and then thought, oh no, hang on, <laughs> it's completely not, is it? He's as fast as a skink. First Saurus only takes one hit, but it does take it. And that guy doesn't go back. Again, that's the wrong direction, Mr. P. Yep. I mean, even if you need that assist, you'd, you'd somehow do it from two squares further back, because yeah. this, this, this the going game here is heading up turn. away from there. <laughs> yeah, the, the next turn, the skink is going to be here, and he's going to have a wall here. So yep. you, need to, you need to get somewhere where you can yep. get in the way of this wall, or, or you know, yep. something. And this is not the square. The first move was, was pretty decent with the plus double plus move. It came to more or less the right place. If it has to assist that Saurus, it has to, but at least it's, you know, active. His plan was to chain push the stand firm instead. Help me, in my humble <laughs> okay. opinion, one of the best... Oh, no, it was his own player. player. Wait. Yeah. Okay, I don't understand. I thought maybe he was going to push it. You know, I thought maybe he wanted to push the Crocs. And then push the He's crocs away, or chain his own beastman back, but he didn't. Push one of his players things. into a less relevant position, which yeah. is something I try to avoid doing. He's got two players now to get in the way. In the end. Yeah. Is he blitzed? No, here comes the blitz. I don't think he has. So the blitz is going to be, yes, in the wrong direction. Perfect. <laughs> yep, so now he's got one player in the way. <laughs> Would have been better to just not blitz. Do you know, I have a feeling that player might get blitzed now, Jim. Yeah, he might be, yeah. 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 Alternatively, he could blitz this warrior, right? He could he could put the guard in. Yeah, you could, but it's, it's just, on a one in nine, it's slightly worse, isn't it? Because mm. you're on a claw mighty again. Yeah. But then you've got guards here and stuff. It's interesting, isn't it? I think you might think about it for a little bit. 
but probably will go for the Beastman just because the Beastman's faster, right? And more, more likely yeah. to deal with. It. Wait, what? Oh, he's, he's switching. Okay, he's switching and going for a longer stall. Okay, well, I don't like this. The longer we, until we win, the longer and we haven't won yet. Yes. Yeah, that's that, like, that's the two ways of looking at it, isn't it? This is like the later in the half you score, the more secure the win is. Obviously, like you know, okay, he could score on turn eleven. Um, he's still probably going to win if he scores on turn sixteen. He de like he's one hundred percent one, right? So you can understand the switch. I mean, I would feel but... wielding this team against Mister Page if I score a second, I've one hundred percent won. But I get it. This is slower and slightly safer. Yeah. To some degree. To some you're degree, not, yeah. But yeah, yeah it's, it's not. The problem is you're not in range, whereas my plan you would be. Yes. Oh, yeah, out of 100%. Out of 100%. You're still as of near of all of those monsters. Yeah. Though slightly better defended than if you'd got a push and were heading up the other way. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure about it. I'm really not. Yeah. No, I'm not. Because you've got to get through at some point. Yeah. And time is not on your side. And you've well, had a free I mean, route through this turn. It sort of is in terms of Blood Bowl, but not in terms of this specific matchup, because these claws will kill you eventually. Yeah. Yeah. That Crox is going down. It may not be this shot, it may not be the next shot, but I bet you over the next five it goes. Yep. There's no chain uh, help. Because. Oh well, okay. There's a chain on a blitz, yeah. But he's not. not he can't. He can't chain, and he can't get a hit on the ball through a chain. So yeah, you can you can chain the Crocs there, and then get an extra hit on this guy or this guy. Probably this guy, right? What the stand from Crocs? Yeah, yeah. Juggernaut, Beastman. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, so you could you could have filled this square, chained him onto there, and got an extra hit in front. But it's still only giving him ball contact, isn't it? Yeah. But he could have done it. Le de he, he still can now, yeah. This, this guy could come around. Well, I mean, I'd sort of say that's fine, because you're going to put so much resources into doing that. But, um... When I won in 36 away from that ball contact, uh, your entire team's left behind. No, oh, yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any really good moves here. Like, I think it was, a, it was, a, it was a fine turn from Baza, wasn't it? Like, you know, this, this is hard to, this is hard to molest. Um, but I did prefer just getting in and then get, like, you know, getting down and getting in next turn. Well, also by now we have to have put a re-roll into taking this Crocs down. We can't afford to be stuck on the twat magnet with eighty percent of our team. No, not really. And it looks like that's where it's going to be. Mm. I mean, that guy's very intimidating, but on his own, he's not doing hugely much. Yeah, yeah, you're the guy. Yeah, he could have stalled. Yeah, as well, he could have just taken the space and then not banged it in. You would have had the option of banging it in. How do you in. pile that? Oh, <laughs> Jim. Oh, I'm, I'm getting triggered now. No, yeah, that was uh... that was a choice. Yeah, I mean, you could have, for example, gone and tagged the guard Saurus that's just ahead of the ball and hence I'll prevented to, uh, them moving into more about these the babies. backfield in quite so many numbers. Meaning that that beastman you've left in the backfield is a lot more relevant. Yep. Or you just pile on because Casaba smash. Yep. I mean, I think the play was to was to have moved a guy around the back, chain on the there, because then at least like, you know, like this is not, there's nothing in the way, right? At least if you bang down this Saurus, then you've got like something in the way, but he's just got nothing yep. in the way. Yep. Look, ideal world here. He doesn't manage to knock this beastman over. No, he has. Yeah, page is screwed. <laughs> so that's a question of just how do you want to do it? Personally, I would blitz the mighty blow off the other Saurus so that two Sauruses were running with me. Mm. And then I'd dodge the um, skink off late turn. Yeah, I would have no, done this. Way. just taken the hit and he's going to presumably knock the ball carrier over. That's fine too. Yeah, I, I like that, and then move you guys up the sideline, and then they're down, right? You, you know, you, you've got them moved up. Oh, no, maybe he's not. I'm maybe going to have done it a bit differently. Oh, yeah. I would have done this blitz. I think this blitz is fine. I think that block and that blitz, then you've got both hits with block. Yeah, right? I'd have done it towards the edge, not into the field. Yeah, but he, he wants to go sideline, doesn't he? Like, that's the only real 
Yeah, blooming lizards, kings, and their sidestep sideline cages. Yeah. It's an interesting one because, like, obviously, Bazzard just wants to go as safe as possible now, doesn't he? Like, that's the thing. Yes. Because so he thinks the game's sh- won. So, yeah. yeah. He already showed it last turn with how he, how he didn't take that space and he wanted to go marginally And, safe. of course, there is still another Saurus to come forwards after this. So, yeah. it's it really, it's all so fine. Where's he go? One, two, three, four, five, six. He could go there. That's pretty nice, isn't it? Then that completely cages yeah, that ball. That's exactly where I'd go. Yeah, that's really nice. That is, that is really nice. This has to be the square. This is such a good square. I'll be shocked if this isn't the square. I've just been looking at that myself and thinking, oh, there's a sexy square. <laughs> oh, oh, so true, sir. Oh. Here we go. Is it? It's going to be, isn't it? Oh, it is one of the. Oh, look at oh. that square, Jim. Oh, oh there's a square. <laughs> now that that's a square. <laughs> and if you don't understand exactly why that's a square when you're watching this, um, well, I mean, perhaps go and have a little look at the pages. <laughs> so was my cock. Oh. What a square. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that's that's the kind of square you, you dream about. Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> you bring home oh, and introduce God. your mother. That's the kind of square you stay with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look, look at the lovely four between it and the saurus behind it on the left. Yep. Yeah, it's just. And the four to the skink, and the four to the one it's, marking it's, the. It's just. It's a gorgeous square. Oh. Even the four to the one with the sidestep up ahead of the ball. I mean, it's just mm. it's a perfect square. It's perfection, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's a beautiful, beautiful square. <laughs> oh dear! And now all Mr. Page has is the blitz on this sidestep skink. Oh no! He's, okay, he's going in for the. He's just going in for the ball. Fair enough. Yeah, five plus. Why yeah, not? Why yeah. Not? This is probably I think the best that's, bet. Um, worth trying. I mean, it would have been two die if he got there on a blockless ball carrier. So. Yeah. Good shout by Mr. Page. Far from hopeless. Yeah. Good shout by Mr. Page. Uh, five plus, so with a re-roll, he was more likely to get there than not. Yeah. 55% with a re-roll to be seeing the dice there. Yeah. No, I respect that. Of course, he looks a fool as it didn't work, but it, it was the right play. Yeah, I believe it was, yeah. Of course, the problem Particularly was... Particularly as he didn't have enough of his team in the backfield here to do much else. Yeah, he kind of needed the board down, right? Because if he pals yeah. him, then he sidesteps over here and then... This is all. Amazing. The recovery is just as difficult, yes. Yeah. Although it can still bounce off a skink into a better place. Yeah, true. So, you know, there's still ways it, it does kind of work, but yes, the both down was better than the power. But now, of course, we get a full stall and, uh, and an easy win, and yeah. it's just about minimizing Sora's hits. Yes, but I mean, if it, even if it wasn't a full stall, if you force him in on what, on 12? Yeah. Do you really think Mr. P thinks he can score in two no. and then turn it over in two? Oh no, 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 no! I was, I wasn't, I wasn't criticizing Mr. Page in any way. So there. I thought the play was the right one. No, hundred percent. But like, what really, I mean is, had he really gone down, had he it, down it does there, look right? so foolish, but it actually is the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah, you've got to play it your out. Yep. And yeah, as Storr says, maybe you should catch up the ball earlier. Um, <laughs> yes, I mean the, the reason it, the reason it. it needed to get done was that the prior turns he didn't prioritize moving back either drive when the ball was obviously disappearing past him he didn't seem to realize yeah. but from the position he was in you know just taking that turn as a puzzle that was you know i think the right move yeah what i don't like this i would have moved this skink first um so that you can take this dodge off right yeah Oh, I think this is the point where Colin often struggles with focus when he absolutely knows it's done. Yeah. Baza. So yeah, he does dodge it, but he's he's left he's left a skink that could have moved and done something. Yeah, Which certainly could have been more that. relevant than it is because it's mm. doing nothing at all. Yeah. But getting off the claw is such a priority. But for example, that beastman could have been kept on the edge or at least been made to blitz out. Yeah. Yeah, there's just could have had another one back by the ball carrier, just you know, in case in two turns something gets saucy. But it's fine. 
I guess you can argue that, you know, if he'd made the dodge off, he would have fouled somebody or something. Maybe that was the thing, you know. But Yeah, possibly he thought, so. Maybe he can't get to anywhere that good. Like, he could have thought about it, right? He could have thought, yeah, okay, I can keep him on the sideline. I can get down there, but he's not really doing anything. So he's got he's got a bench still. So, he's you know, maybe he's thinking, look, if I, if I get the dodge, I'll foul somebody. Yeah, just pop a cheeky little boot in on that downed mighty blow, for example. Mm. Relevant midfield position and a one-assist foul. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. And now you just score it, don't you? There's no point to try and elaborate a stall here. Look at this. This is called backfield pressure. Now, we haven't seen any of that in this game. What tends to happen is when someone's breaking through you with the ball, you put this sort of thing up in the very first turn to give you options to prevent them stalling. So if this had been done, say, two turns ago, then yes, your line of scrimmage gets thinned, and that's a problem. You can end up losing there, and they can stall up on the halfway line, and you're running backwards to the fight again. But without this, without something like this covering some backfield, it just—it was too easy for those incredibly fast games to run away. Yep. Oh, and the Sauruses aren't slow either. You know, they—they they outpace everything on the Chaos team. Interesting, just doing where he is. I thought he might have blitzed this guy right, and then see if he see what happened, and then stole in the corner. But I guess. Okay, no, but he's just going in. Okay, just, I guess maybe he, count, he didn't count, and then he and then he counted, and it didn't work. But I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind doing that blitz first. But obviously, it does give you one in twelve nine six to lose. Which, well, not to lose, to maybe draw and then maybe lose. But I, I would have quite liked the two D on, on that guy, and then see what happens. You know. I predict we see three rookie skinks on the line, and everything else just on the back line. There's no need to fight oh, yeah. at all here. Yeah, definitely. He def I think he scoring was exactly as we said. It's about getting your team out of harm's way as much about winning the game. Yep. Now you're in the lovely position of doing both. Mm. Oh yeah, Victor Mabo. Yeah, I didn't know what hits he was potentially giving up there. So yeah, maybe that's fair enough as well. Right? Yes, it, exactly. I think it was the hits on the fail state as much as anything. Yeah. Or the or success state. The hits on the success state, right? Like if you stall, yeah. you're still you're getting a Saurus hit yeah, exactly. and stuff. So yeah, just just bang it in. And, and Whereas right now he's in the unthinkable position of six fully alive Sauruses and a completely well Croxicol. Yep. Yep. Unbelievable. I mean, yeah. would you Adam and Eve it? We have lost a skink. One skink has died. Yes, but nobody cares about that one skink. No. <laughs> Even that skink's mum's cheering on the sauruses. <laughs> sad, sad but true. Yep. <laughs> I do think Blas has had the better dice. I also think he's used them incredibly well. I think Mr. Page has had the worst dice, but also the worst ideas. I'm very biased. I, you know, Baz is a friend of mine, but I do think he's outplayed him. Yeah. And Baz hasn't played perfectly, has he? There's been a few turn ordering no. things that were that were I would well, I would argue were just wrong, and. Uh, then there he also was hasn't decision. been pressured to the level you would hope and expect, really. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, there was a thing where we would have both gone broken through there and he didn't and stuff. But, I mean, that's not yeah. a knock on Bazaar, is it? It's just... No, nope. no, oh, he just chose a different route that was, I don't think, quite as good, but probably ever so slightly safer. Yeah, yeah. Safer I mean, our soon. route, if the, if the hit on the Beastman didn't work, it was a, there was a tiny little bit of... You know, GFI shenanigans, and it would have been a reasonably tight little pocket for one turn, but the advantage of it was you'd scored the second turn, so. Yeah. Yeah, and I, th I mean, I think the biggest fault in Mr. Page as well, bald, but I think the biggest fault with Mr. Page's play was just not getting a bench, right? Like, he was always yes. going to lose somebody in this match. Like, you know, he's yeah. an armor eight. He's, he's got a mighty blow and a croc, so like he's got two mighty blow guys to hit with, well, potentially. And when you've got a team like this, you've got to think, what is my opponent going to do about it? Yeah. Not just, ha ha it'll kill everything. Well, yes, it will, but what's your opponent going to try and do about that? Yeah. And with Baza having the long bench, you know, some fouling always looked a possibility, so you're likely to lose one or two numbers. Yeah. If you've got the money, not having a bench seems a bad choice. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I, I, I was shocked he didn't buy a bench. Like, I, I fully believed he would have got at least one. I would have gone two. But I can't yeah. believe he didn't at least take one. Because, yeah, I mean, Baza has the dirty player for even. Yeah. Now, yeah. The advance forward was pretty good, but he, yeah, once the, the ball was threatened and taken, you need to instantly shift gear and start imagining where it's going to go, not the fight you want to be in. Yes. I still think this team's dangerous enough to have got most of the damage it's got, but to have just kept a couple of the key threats in better positions to try and deal with those breakthroughs. Yeah. But 
But, I mean, that said, Mr. P gets incredible success with the style he plays, and he enjoys the style he plays. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like the guy a lot. If you ever see him play, he plays with a huge smile on his face. He, he loves his blood bulge. Mm -hmm. He sure does. But yeah, I do believe it's ludicrous to not have a bench. Because, like, there's so much power in there. You know, to why are you giving up reliability? It just seems, it just seems crazy, right? It seems crazy. Like, the bench gives you reliability, doesn't it? Rerolls gives you reliability. So, and then your trade off for that is like TV efficiency and stuff, and you're already 2000 TV, so. Yeah, once you're facing inducements, why? I mean, I, I come back again to my glorious victory against the horrible little halflings <laughs> uh, in a match that I just don't think has been heralded quite enough. <laughs> and I did decide that despite being, you know, up ahead and ahead a lot of TV, a 12th dwarf was a minimum because the trees are going to take something out. It's going to yeah. happen. Yeah. And the extra reroll as well, right? That's... Yep, and I went from two rerolls and leader to three rerolls and leader because the chef was always going to take at least one or two rerolls. And that's versus halflings. Like, that's well, dwarves because... versus halflings. Like, the literal. Well, that's their second... outs, Jim. That's yeah, no, their yeah, outs. Their outs right. is either taking all of my rerolls or getting me short on numbers and outmassing me with their just pack of little fling bastards. Yeah, exactly. This is this is a great lesson for people watching, isn't it? You know, this is this is the worst possible matchup for the halflings, the the second or third best matchup for the dwarves, right? And then still in the first round Thank you, Title. still making the the players to optimize the match. And and then here's Mr. Page versus, you know, Baza who's like a great player with a with a pretty good yeah. team and yeah. with a wizard and he's not he's not maximizing you know the No, the I don't think he is. Team. I mean he's got the right team to deal with it. You know, he's got the can openers to the tin cans of lizards, but being short on numbers, I mean you've seen it this half. He started with nine. It's been incredibly hard yeah. to get any traction on these lizards and he didn't manage it. You can't cover the field effectively with nine. Plus, it just might have changed all sorts of other risk profiles and things, which would have meant less damage to other pieces. Yeah, yeah. It could have had it like a domino effect of decisions and board sticks. And yeah, that said, Mr. Page will be back again. As uh, as you said, Jim, he does know the the secret hoodoo of developing big nasty teams and regularly qualifying them for chances. Yes, he's top of the ladder right now, I believe, after playing he is. Like 50 games in five days. <laughs> it's, um, is it a chaos team he's doing it with this time, Jim? It is, yeah, yeah, surprisingly. Surprisingly. Surprisingly enough. That was how I knew the 70%. Like somebody said, seven of his last ten games had been concession victories. <laughs> that's how I knew. Well, I mean, I, I, look, I, I don't feel for him for that. He puts himself deliberately into position where that's going to happen, and he celebrates them like he would any other win. Oh, yeah. Um, his choices. But, I, you know, I do feel a bit sorry for him here. He did have the worst of the dice. But there is some thinking he could do about how to, you know, alleviate some of those problems when they happen. Yeah, uh, maybe. May I mean, it would work, of course. <laughs> well, maybe Mr. Page is a, uh, you know, if Mr. Page wanted to get better at Blood Bowl, he would be the poster boy <laughs> of the swashbuckling school, right? You know, like the whole Dio swashbuckling idea. He is. I mean, Mr. Page is not, is not unakin to swashbuckling. He comes up sometimes with some lovely angles, um, some beautiful plays, but mostly to get in a nice claw pop. <laughs> Sometimes, if you put the same focus on winning the game, I think you'd have more success. Mm. I mean, a very talented player as I think he is, and I think of late, particularly, he's been stretching his play style into other races, and that's been all to the good. But mm. well, an incredibly capable team came with quite a limited plan tonight. Yeah. And an incredibly limited bench. I think that was the, the most mind boggling yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, from preparation onwards, it was all bad. Yeah. But you know, if that if that if that thrown rock hadn't killed his hadn't killed his warrior and used his app on the first turn, you know, like he was instantly yeah. down 220, 240 TV, right from the from the instant. Yes, but it did, Jim. Yeah, it did. <laughs> It did. <laughs> and it, it gave, you know, the counter bonus I said that the Saurus on the other side was stunned, giving yeah. one less hit on that line of scrimmage. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, who knows? Who knows if that hadn't happened? Um, 
you know, and, it, and some of the hits go differently, it could have been an easy win. But I think Baza was always going to scrap and like make it as hard as possible. But you know, he could have, he could have, it wouldn't have been that crazy from to have rolled like the undead did against the against the lizards. <laughs> Which, if you didn't see that PC, oh my god, it was insane. <laughs> Like every hit that the undead made, they like cast a, 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 a lizard man play. It was it was unbelievable. He pitch cleared him, and then like the lizards had to set up like one player on the LOS, then two players on the LOS, then one player on the LOS. It was like his team was massacred, and that could have easily well, I mean, happened it, it, in this game. Yeah, it, it can always happen. You know, I, I had a not dissimilarly awful thing placing a big chaos team with my little tiny orcs 10 games old against 30 odd you know lots of glory and things and you're hoping to get the luck but this time he got it and by turn three by turn four on my own drive i was down to seven orcs <laughs> and completely out of position and you know by half time i was down to four orcs on the field and with three coming back for the second half you just think there is no point to this game whatsoever yeah. But you know it happens, particularly in TV Plus. Yep. I mean, there are ways you could invent a cup competition where, well, however people got there, their team is then, you know, they keep the same race, but they're allocated say 1,400 and 1,500. I don't know something that dwarves would be perfect at. <laughs> you're allowed to build the team, and then you know people go into a more equal competition that way. But everything has its problems. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Whatever level you set it at, some races would. You know, benefit if it's a thousand to sort of eleven 1, hundred, you'd expect undead and dark elves to dominate. If it was a sort of twelve to fourteen, probably undead and dwarves. Much above that, you're coming into chaos dwarf territory and perhaps orcs. And then above that, you come into the chaos and nurgle zones. It's there are some, you know, some levels that we know what is strong where. Yep. Yep. Everything would have a thing. And uh, yeah, 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 Pidge does have a great attitude for football, yeah. Absolutely he does, it does. Attitude. I mean, I, I genuinely, I'm not fellow, taking the yeah. piss. I think Pidge's a lovely guy. Yeah. And he really enjoys his blood bowl. And whatever makes anyone do that, I'm all about it. Yeah. And if you're just in it to kill things and chuckle as you do, that's absolutely, you're right. I mean, <laughs> you can understand some people will get upset by it. And that's their right. But they, they certainly haven't got the right to tell you that you shouldn't be having whatever fun you want from blood bowl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> well, Stort, you're Andorra and nobody cares what you think. <laughs> yeah, no one cares what you think. <laughs> if you want to, you know, snipe some of the nicest people in Blood Bowl and make their entire chat upset, then it's your right to do that, and I will mm -hmm. defend it. Yeah, see, look, 20 AV breaks. There was 22 AV breaks that led to, like, 10 cars in this other game, and this time wow. we've got 20 AV breaks leading to one, uh, no, three cars. It's six chaos, to be fair, look, plenty of chaos, but... Uh... But yeah. Bazzi coached with very well with what he lost. He did, yep, yep, well done, Bazzi. Wasn't, wasn't frightened well, to yeah. throw his, um, yeah, well done, Bazzi. Wasn't frightened to throw his appos at the problems. Dealt with them well. Spotted that uh, his opponent had low numbers. Tried to lean into that. And did enough. Whizzed at the perfect time. Great plan to get away with it. All good. Yep. And, uh, yes, you definitely had the better of the dice, mate. Yeah, the rock was but incredible. You used them yeah. well. Yep. So, yep, commiserations, Mr. Page. Congratulations, Baza Castine. Thank you very much, Purple Chest. As always, glorious having you on. Pleasure to be here. And thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.